Welcome to English 319, Medical Writing at Miami University. I'm Anna Madini, your online instructor. As with most Miami University classes, we'll begin this class with a brief introduction. All too often, scientists have the misconception that they are intellectually divorced from the humanities, especially writing. As they progress in their careers, however, they find that nothing could be further from the truth. To obtain research funding, publish manuscripts, and ultimately play a role in improving medical science, scientists must be able to communicate their findings. Furthermore, they must be able to convince people from their own and other disciplines of the importance of their research findings. One of the most important persuasive tools they can develop is the ability to write, so they can convince stakeholders that their work is important, unique, and therefore worth supporting. This course is designed to help prepare you for writing effectively as a science, research, and or healthcare professional. I hope you do not consider each of these separate entities because they seldom are. Health and allied health professionals need to stay current with scientific developments and will conduct research from time to time regardless of their career paths after graduation. If you are in health communications, both science and research will remain essential to your profession. Therefore, writing effectively is a skill for your career, not just for your curriculum. You will be introduced to writing situations and document genres associated with these settings. Hmm. Genre is a favorite word of English majors, and as in all majors, there are certain terms or jargon commonly used within it. A genre is simply a synonym for style or category. For example, film genres are science fiction, historical drama, documentary, etc. And as we will learn, there are even genres within the genre of medical writing. There are two textbooks, one required and one recommended. The required text is Writing in the Sciences by Penrose and Katz. This book covers scientific writing for different audiences, reviews the essentials of writing research reports, addresses effective proposals, describes creating posters and presentations, and includes case studies. The recommended text is Writing in the Health Professions by Hefferon. This book's concepts are very helpful for pre-med, nursing, and allied health majors. The concepts include charting, project management, and writing for international or multicultural audiences. I will cover these concepts in our course, but my presentations will supplement rather than substitute for the textbook. I do not require the book because it was published in 2005, and so a significant amount of its content, such as website links and references to paper charting, are outdated. Still, the underlying concepts are important. Now let's review what I hope you will get out of this course. By the end of this semester, you will be able to analyze and evaluate the rhetoric of medical communications. And rhetoric is another favorite word of English majors, but fear not, we'll look at what it means during the course. Compose and design common medical writing genres for a variety of audiences. Develop practical communication skills with a particular emphasis on effective speaking, writing, and exhibiting on scientific and science-related topics to a variety of audiences. Incorporate visuals such as charts, tables, and figures, and descriptions into medical communications. Now, as we'll learn, visuals are an important part of medical communications. But it's also important that these materials be accessible to special needs audiences. Identify ethical dimensions of medical writing. 
identify international and multicultural considerations in medical communications, access a range of resources and skills for effective communication of complex topics, compose and design professional development materials appropriate for individual careers. This course is asynchronous and entirely online. That simply means you can log on to the Canvas course site whenever you like and work at your convenience as long as you meet the established deadlines. The deadlines are posted on Canvas in the Syllabus section. I have created a distinct page for each week of the course to guide you through that week's readings and activities and you can access these distinct pages from the Canvas course homepage. On the week's page I also provide links to handouts that you can download for future reference as well as links to websites and other materials that may be useful to you. Now let's turn our attention to how this structure will work in practice. Here's what you'll do as a participant in this course. Well, participate. You will participate in the course through the online discussion board. and This requires you to prepare one original response to the weekly prompt and reply to at least two other students' posts. These posts constitute 20% of your course grade. I have a discussion board rubric posted on our Canvas site. Please read it carefully before you begin posting responses so you will know the expectations and the grading criteria. Right. The first word in the course title is writing. Well, one of the words anyway. You will have shorter assignments to apply the concepts covered each week which will constitute 40% of your course grade, as well as major assignments to think critically about the rhetorical content, design, and, yes, genres of healthcare communications, which will be the remaining 40% of your course grade. I also have a grading rubric posted on our Canvas course site. Research. You will identify and use resources to discover new insights, best practices, and patient population information. Contribute. You will share your individual talents, creativity, and efforts as part of a team working on a major assignment. And enjoy. You're in a health or science major because you're passionate about it. Here's your chance to express yourself. If you're not passionate about it, you should seriously consider changing your major because there are few things worse than being trapped at a career that doesn't make you glad to go to work every day. So what will I do while you're doing what you'll do? Participate. I'll present information, moderate discussions, and provide handouts or supplementary readings. I will also arrange Google Hangout sessions during the term so you can keep in touch with fellow students and me. In online classes we emphasize writing, but sometimes you may want to have a chat instead. Write. I'll use our Canvas course site throughout the semester to post handouts, links, and other materials that supplement, not substitute for, your textbook readings. Research. I will identify and post new resources and information on our Canvas site as I discover them. And I'm finding new information and resources all the time. And if I think they will help you, I'll tell you about them. Contribute. I will review your work for this course and provide feedback along with your grade for each assignment. As previously stated, I will be posting resources and information as well. Enjoy. I like teaching purpose-driven writing more than traditional academic writing. Well, now that we know what will happen and what we're going to do, let's get started, shall we? Of all the life forms on Earth, humans seem to have two unique abilities. We ask why, such as why is this patient ill? Why don't we have a cure for this disease? Why does this virus mutate? Why do some people become more addicted easily than others? And we ask, how can we change this situation into something better? 
In science and medicine, we try to answer questions like this, but we also need to be able to communicate these answers to others. We communicate to educate our colleagues, our patients, funding agencies, and the general public so they can appreciate the significance of our findings, achieve better outcomes, fund our research, and understand why science is so important to society. If that's true, and I assure you it is, then why is so much scientific and medical writing so bad? Consider this quote. A fog has settled on scientific English. Well-written English effortlessly communicates the writer's intent to the reader. Unfortunately, far too often, science is written in a form that renders the content hard to understand and which makes unreasonable demands on the reader. Medical and science writing are plagued by the passive voice, arcane sentence structure, and obscure terminology. This also happens when the writer writes for an audience of one, specifically him or herself. This helps to explain why many students abandon science courses. They blame themselves, thinking they just aren't smart enough to understand the material. However, to paraphrase Shakespeare, the fault, dear students, lies not within yourselves, but within the authors of science textbooks. There are more exceptions now, but traditionally these books are so poorly written that few people have more than a faint idea of what concepts the authors are trying to present. Why has this happened? How can we change the situation into something better? Well, it's happened because in the past, writers have not had much consideration for their readers. So, maybe we're not ready for a political revolution, but it's high time we had a science and medical writing revolution, and you are on the front lines. As we'll learn throughout this course, medical writers have a high level of responsibility. After all, decisions affecting people's lives could be based on your writing. Therefore, you need to make sure readers have a sufficient understanding of the subject matter to read and understand what you have written. Even if they lack the same background, your job is to ensure their understanding. Therefore, effective medical writing is concise, precise and understandable. So why is a lot of what is considered medical writing none of these things? Now here's an example. The development of good pastures disease may be considered an autoimmune conformeropathy that involves perturbation of the quaternary structure of the A345NC1 eczema inducing a pathogenic conformational change in the A3NC1 and U5NCL subunits, which in turn elicits an autoimmune response. Hmm. The author is suffering from conformeropathy to good writing, and my autoimmune response is to throw the paper into the recycling bin. Uh, there may well be an important point about good pastures disease buried in there somewhere, but what's wrong with stating it clearly and using real words? Good writing and good medical and scientific writing convey information to readers in a useful manner. I'll conclude this introduction with an important quote and I hope you will take it to heart as you prepare writing assignments both for this course and in your future career. It does not matter how pleased an author might be to have converted all the right data into sentences and paragraphs. It matters only whether a large majority of the reading audience accurately perceives what the author had in mind.